Hoppity hop hop hoppity hop hop spring is on its way hoppity hop hop hoppity hop hop bunnies are giving us fur to play so today is actually this is kind of an exciting video for me i know i know i'm always excited about my videos but I am excited about this one because this is my first time doing a collaboration. Uh, a group of us creators here on YouTube who work in the fiber space have gotten together and we are all doing a video in the month of April on Angora. So when I decided to be a part of this collaboration, I really wanted to come from it from the standpoint of a knitter working with Angora for the first time because frankly, I am a knitter working with Angora for the first time. Yes, this is the first time that I'm doing a project involving Angora fiber. And I feel like a lot of times uh, the average knitter, and I consider myself uh, a typical knitter, uh, it, a lot of times we are buying commercially made yarn. So I went online and I started looking for different options of yarn that I could purchase and I got onto webs and there was a closeout sale and I came across this. This is Wisdom Yarns Angora Lace. This is an Angora wool blend and a blend is a very typical way for Angora to get utilized. We'll get more into that as the video goes along. And I just felt like this might be the right yarn for a project that I have been eyeing for a while. The Half Fade, Half Shawl by Lavish Designs. I just felt something in my soul that said this needs a touch of luxe. So today I'm going to take you on my journey about learning about Angora, learning about this specific yarn, swatching with it, and you know, together we can learn more about Angora. So hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, give this video a thumbs up, and let's learn more about Angora fiber. As we get started, again, quick reminder that down in the description box, you will find timestamps to different parts of the video. So if there's some specific piece of information you wanna to get to or something you wanna see again, you can always find those timestamps down below. Also down in the description box, you will find a list of materials and resources that I think are relevant to today's video. And some of these will have clearly marked affiliate links. If you click on one of these links, it'll take you to a shopping website where if you make a purchase, I might then earn a small commission, and this really does help support my channel. Thanks to you guys utilizing some of my affiliate links or leaving me a Kofi or a super thanks, I was able to buy materials for today's video, so it really doesn't make a difference um, for me in being able to keep doing this. If you utilize one of my affiliate links, thank you so much. It's greatly appreciated. And if not, that's totally cool. I'm really just glad that you're here watching a video today. When I hear Angora, I think of, honestly, I think of Lana Turner and the Sweater Girl, <laughs> but I think of fuzzy sweaters. I think of sweaters that seem to be made out of angel fluff and air. But in fact, Angora does not come from the heavens. It comes from little bunny rabbits, not goats, bunny rabbits. Angora rabbit originates from Turkey, and there are now four main breeds that are used to produce the fiber that gets spun into yarn. And this fiber is pretty amazing. On the one hand, it's incredibly soft. This is one of the finest fibers in the world. And by fine, I'm talking about the thickness of the fiber itself. It's about 12 to 16 microns. If you were to compare that to merino wool, that's usually between 15 to 25 microns. <laughs> That's not a knock on Merino. It's just a certain quality about Angora. In addition to being incredibly fine, Angora is silky and it's very lightweight. And yet the fiber itself is hollow, so it's incredibly warm. In fact, it's eight times warmer than what you find from sheep's wool. <laughs> But it is not all heavenly halo with Angora. People also think about things like felting and 
shedding, lots of shedding. The Angora fiber is very short. Um, and the thing about short fibers is to make them into yarn, you have to put in a lot of twist into that yarn so that the fibers will hold together. Uh, this is something I learned from Clara Park's book, uh, The Knitter's Book of Yarn. And in the book, she goes into detail why commercially spun 100% Angora yarn often doesn't have enough twist to reduce the amount of shedding. And hand spinners actually will be able to create a 100% Angora fiber uh, with a lot of twist than the commercially made yarns. However, it's actually pretty rare that you find a 100% Angora yarn. And the reason for that is, well, like I said before, it's an incredibly short fiber and uh, it really benefits from being blended with longer staple fibers that hold together better, um, like merino wool. <laughs> a lot of times what you will find are yarns like Angora Lace, which is a merino nylon Angora blend. Um, and the merino does a couple of things. One, it uh, holds, it helps to hold the Angora fiber together because it's a longer staple. But the other thing that the merino does is it helps the yarn with the Angora have elasticity because there's one other quality that Angora is known for and that's growing. Angora is doesn't have a lot of crimp in it and so when you stretch it and you let go, it doesn't bounce back. Like here I have, this is a merino nylon viscous blend and you'll notice when I put it down and I pull the yarn, it bounced right back, <laughs> bounced back a lot. Probably because of all the nylon, but you know, I can pull the yarn and then I pull it back and it bounces back. This, um, can I find the end? There we go. This fiber, <laughs> is a merino angora nylon blend so it has bounce back but that bounce back is because of the merino and the nylon that is blended with the angora uh if this was just angora you wouldn't see this kind of bounce with the yarn so this yarn that i got hopefully for my half fade half shawl is 60% merino, 30% nylon, and 10% angora. Now, if you just heard 10% angora and you went, that doesn't sound like a whole lot. Is that angora really adding any luxury to this yarn or is it just there to help raise the price? The answer is, it really does add something to the yarn. The thing about angora and yarn blends that you have to understand, there's two things. One is a yarn blend. When it gives you those percentages, those percentages are based on weight, not volume, okay? So 10% of the weight of this yarn is Angora. But here's the thing you have to understand with Angora. It is incredibly lightweight, so it may not weigh a whole lot, but that doesn't mean there's not a lot of volume. Like in this one, just looking at the yarn before I even knitted it, like you can see it right there, that's, the Angora right there, okay? Like I look at this yarn and I can physically see the Angora. And what that tells me is even though it's 10% weight, there's still quite a bit of Angora in this. Now, to be fair, this yarn 10% is definitely on the lower end. Normally what you see is more 20 to 50%. But as I learned uh, through my book and the internet, it doesn't take a whole lot of Angora in a yarn to get the beautiful halo and qualities of Angora. In fact, uh, Angora can kind of take over a yarn very quickly. But even though I was feeling pretty good about the 10% of Angora in this yarn, that doesn't mean it was spun well. Say you're in a store, all right, and you see a ball and it has like a beautiful, what seems might be a beautiful blend of angora and wool and just be like magical fluffiness. How can you know that it is going to be magical fluffiness? Well, there's a couple things. One, you want to take the end of the yarn and just run your finger across it like this 
and then see how much fiber comes out. I don't know if you can see it on camera or not, but I got a couple little bits of fluff on my finger from that. Now, I've rubbed this end of the fiber quite a lot, so I'm gonna actually go towards the middle and I'm gonna just do the pinch and rub test again. And again, I only got like a little couple strands, not a whole lot. So that told me that this actually is pretty, has a pretty good blend of fiber and enough twist that the Angora that's in this is holding. But something else you can look at. Take your, take the yarn, and try to untwist it. See, I'm trying to untwist the plies and I twist it. There, I got it untwisted, but when I let go, it twists right back into shape. What this tells me is the yarn has a good amount of twist in it. So when I got this yarn in and I rubbed my fingers along it and then I kind of played with trying to untwist the plies, uh, I had a really good feeling that in terms of this yarn and shedding, I was gonna be in very good shape. But of course, you don't really know what the yarn is going to be like and whether it's really suitable for your project until you do a swatch. So the project that I was eyeing to pair with this yarn, the Half Fade Half by Lovish Design, is actually constructed of various lace patterns. But the gauge that was given was for the first lace pattern in the project, the center triangle. And something about this that I did a bit differently was I didn't make a square for my swatch. I went ahead and I made a small triangle. Uh, yes, I wanted to get at least close to the size of the gauge that was recommended in the pattern because I wanted to get the basic size of the shawl, but it's not my priority. A swatch isn't always about hitting gauge or making gauge. Sometimes you do a swatch to test out a yarn to see if it's the right one for a project, to see how it behaves. Sometimes you do a swatch to try out the techniques involved in that project or to try out what techniques you might want to apply. In this project, uh, there was a note about not wanting to use a bind off that was too stretchy. So once it was time for the bind off, I chose to do the standard bind off as opposed to my usual one, the decrease bind off. Um, the decrease bind off I find does have more elasticity to it, so I thought maybe the standard bind off was the way to go. But partway through, I stopped and I looked at it and the elasticity wasn't great. I didn't feel like it, there was enough stretch for the lace. And also I didn't like the way the chain in the bind off flips to the front and that's just a characteristic of doing a chain bind off with knit stitches so i decided to undo this bind off and try again i stuck with the standard bind off but this time i'm doing a variation of alternating knits and purls much like binding off in pattern with one by one rib doing this causes the chains to sit across the top of the fabric rather than flip forward or flip backward. Um, I really liked the look of this, but was still dissatisfied with the elasticity. So I tinked back the bind off again to start over and utilized one of my favorite tricks for dealing with a tension problem on your bind off, which is to use a larger needle. And after doing that, I was very pleased with my bind off. That's the benefit of doing a small swatch going into a project sometimes, is I figured all of that out before I had hundreds of stitches to bind off. Um, as I worked with this yarn, I have to say, it was absolutely lovely. This yarn, working with it, didn't feel like working with the superwash wool. It felt like working with a normal wool, and it's because of just that 10% of Angora that was in it. I was also very pleased as I worked with this yarn that I wasn't getting shedding. Yes, there was some little bits that might fly in the air occasionally, but I didn't get a ton of shedding. Uh, if you get an Angora yarn and you're knitting with it and you're finding that there is just like the halo is in front of your eyes while you're knitting, it's probably a sign that the yarn doesn't have enough twist in it or that the blend isn't giving enough structure to hold the fiber together. After I 
washed it, I could look at the fiber and I could see the halo and it was so beautiful and it smelled so lovely and I was so excited. I knew my, my heart was singing. I was like, yes, yes, this is the perfect marriage of project and yarn, yes. That's how I felt. But this here is the finished swatch and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna unpin it now. Um, and you can see as I'm unpinning this edge, see how it bounced backwards like that? That is because of the merino and the nylon in this yarn. That's what gives it that bounce back. So excited for this project. I'm gonna be honest, as I was swatching this, I was really tempted to forego the swatch and just be like, F it, I'm just gonna start knitting the whole project. But I was like, no, you wanna test off, you wanna test your bind off. So here it is unpinned and uh, it unpinned beautifully and you can see the lace. Oh my God, it is beautiful. And I'm gonna bring this up closer and hopefully uh, you can see some of the halo in it, but I can see the halo on the surface of this project and it's just enough that it gives just this beautiful softness to the look of the lace and it looks almost delicate and airy and yet the merino and the nylon gives enough structure to the whole thing. I have no doubt about utilizing this yarn for this project, but I did have a question, which is, is the Angora really bringing that much to the party? I mean, I can see this gorgeous halo, but would it be as beautiful if I had used a yarn without any Angora? It's something that was a little more economical. Like I got a really good price on this yarn because it was on closeout and it was a sale. Um, but this yarn originally was about $20 a ball. So this is an expensive yarn, but I got a really good deal on it because it's a closeout. But what if I utilized a yarn with no Angora? A superwash merino nylon viscous blend. Well, I just so happen to have that. Uh, that is this swatch right here. Um, and you can see it and it's also beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and unpin this now and we can compare the two fabrics. I think actually both of them are beautiful. Both of them have like the lace pattern is gorgeous in both of these yarns. I don't think you could really go wrong utilizing either one of these, but this yarn I think has just more of a soft look to it. Like just the halo just gives it a softer, more delicate uh, appearance than this fiber does. This fiber, looks lovely, but it has a bit more stitch definition to it. It doesn't look as airy as the swatch with the Angora fiber. They're both beautiful, you know, I could, and even feeling them, I can feel the softness of the Angora in this, whereas this, it doesn't feel rough, you know, this would, by no means would this be uncomfortable on my skin, but I can just feel that it doesn't have that um, luxury feel in it. But there's something else too I'm noticing as I'm holding them both. And just sitting here right now with both of these yarns in my hand for just a couple of minutes, I can feel that this hand is getting warmer much more quickly than this hand is. And it doesn't take a whole lot of Angora in a yarn to get all that warmth. So yeah, just 10% Angora added to a yarn can make a real difference in making a project feel a little bit more special. I do think that as a knitter, the key to working with Angora is finding a good blend. How much halo you're going to want from your yarn is gonna be a matter of personal preference. Clara Parks in her book is like, she really loves the fuzzy and the halo. So she likes to have a Angora yarn that has a higher percentage than what this one has. But um, me personally, I think that I would probably stick more to the lower end because I like the touch of halo. I don't necessarily want the halo to take over the whole project, 
but also I live in Southern California and like I said just holding this swatch I can feel my hand get warmer so quickly that I don't think it's practical <laughs> for me to have an Angora sweater that's much more than 10 or 20 percent. But of course, knitters do work with 100% Angora yarn most often. It's worked as an accent to a project, like maybe a little bit of a collar or a cuff or a stripe, but a bit of accent to that project. The other way a 100% Angora yarn will be used is basically carried with a wool yarn. So it's kind of like you're, you're it's kind of like blending. <laughs> But again, if you are a knitter or a crocheter, I cannot recommend this book enough, The Knitter's Book of Yarn. And it is just a wealth of information. It talks about all, all, all the different types of fibers. It talks about yarn structures, and it also has projects in it so that you can start learning and trying out and testing the different yarns because at the end of the day you can read all you can read but it's not until you get a yarn with a new fiber in it into your hands and you start trying it out that you really learn what it can be for you. So um, that being said, it's always nice to go in with some knowledge ahead of time and I highly recommend The Knitter's Book of Yarn by Clara Parks. There is a link to this uh, in my description box. This will be an affiliate link and if you click on that link and you make a purchase I will then earn a small commission and again, thank you so much for your support I love to hear from you and your thoughts on Angora. Is this a fiber you have worked with before? What has your experience been? Or is this a fiber that you choose not to utilize? Uh, you know, there are reasons not to use Angora fiber or to stay away from it. And I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Once again, as a reminder, you will also find a playlist to other videos that are in this collaboration. Uh, I will link it up here if you'd like to watch another one, and there will be a link at the end of the video to that playlist so you can learn even more about Angora, because I was just talking about Angora in a very specific context, but there's more to learn. This is just scraping the surface. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your other knitting, crocheting, yarn wrangling friends. Uh, liking videos, sharing videos, commenting on videos, all helps YouTube know that this is a space worth checking out. And then I get recommended to other people and we help grow this community together. Uh, if you have not already, please make sure that you hit subscribe and the notification bell. Clicking the notification bell will mean you will get alerted whenever I upload a new video or start a live stream. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you have a wonderful day, evening, weekend, weeknight, whenever you may be watching this. And as always, happy health and happy making. Bye! Hey all y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carrie. This is where I talk about making pretty things, usually with pretty string. <laughs> But yeah, it's like, yes, it, but. And it's just like, it's just so fuzzy and cute and adorable and fuzzy and beautiful. Like Angora is all about the halo. All about the halo, all about the halo. Angora is all about the halo. Oh, before I forget, at the end of the video, you will see some suggestions. I'll have the playlist for the collaboration and you know, or if you want to watch another video for me, there'll be a recommendation for you. You can just click on those and keep watching. And also down the corner, you'll see a picture of me. You click on that, you get one more chance to subscribe to my channel. All right, that's it. It's time for lunch, hungry. And then I'm probably gonna cast on this project. <laughs>